Hello everybody and welcome back to another video today. I'm literally gonna do the where the fuck have you been wrap up. Yeah, I, I don't really have an excuse for having been gone <laughs> this whole time, but I will say uh, some announcements to sort of explain my absence besides the usual I'm really busy at work, which I have been. Um, one, which you saw in my little quick check-in last time, was that I was in the process of writing a script, I cranked out a draft, it went through edits, and we cranked out another draft. So that right now is literally getting tiny little modifying tweaks to make it the shooting script, and that's it, it's the shooting script. Um, I will post a video talking about the script, maybe not necessarily what it's about, but at least my process going into writing it, and how I found my flow, and inspirations, etc, etc. That's one. Two, I am a part of an online uh, book club, book group that is for fans of science fiction and fantasy, and somebody pitched the idea of doing some kind of a podcast. So there's going to be two. One is going to actually be a book review podcast, and I will get into that later when I briefly mention the book, one of the books that I'm currently reading. Um, but the other is going to be effectively a like radio drama. And since I'm one of the few with media experience and I, I seem to have the most when it comes to digital media and production and other things like that, um, I'm the producer of this. So I'm sort of trying to keep tabs on everyone and writing up paperwork and just trying to see what's going to happen with that. So yeah, those are going to be some things. I will hopefully be able to post more about those here on this channel so that way if you're interested, you can check them out. But for now, those are in very, very early stages. There's nothing for me to even really show you or anything like that. So I'll just get into what I read in the rest of July and August. I will say that July was a miserable reading month and that I, I really didn't read all that much. But the first book I'm going to hold up is Just One Year by Gail Foreman. This is the companion novel to Just One Day. It is not a sequel. It is a companion. It is effectually that lost or that extra year told from Willem's perspective. Now, I really did enjoy Just One Day, even though I'm like, yeah, there's some stereotypes you have to suspend your disbelief for and all that jazz. But having met Gail Foreman and having listened to her talk in conversation with Maggie Stiefvater, um, I found her really interesting. And I'm just sort of attracted to the idea of two people meeting while one is studying abroad in Europe. And I don't know, I enjoyed it. And I kind of wanted Willem's perspective, Williams, <laughs> Willem's perspective after having read Just One Night. So I rated this book a four out of five stars. I really did end up quite enjoying it. And if you're into contemporaries, the Just One Day Year uh, like series is a good one to get on. I listened to an audiobook of Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers. Now I had actually never read Mary Poppins. I had seen obviously the Disney film and I'd seen Saving Mr. Banks and all that jazz. I rated this book a three out of five. I had been warned it was not as whimsical as the film and uh no effing shit. Um, I thought Mary Poppins was almost sociopathic at times with some of the things she did but there was this weird biting charm to it so I did rate it a three out of five but I'm not gonna read the other uh, books in this series. I read Storm by Amanda Sun, the third and final book in the Paper Gods trilogy. This is a paranormal adventure romance that is set in Japan dealing with their version of paper and ink gods. Um, I had initially posted a review of ink way back when saying that I kind of liked it but not so much. I did go reread it, I changed my opinion, realizing that yeah I actually did kind of like it and so I have continued with this series and these covers are gorgeous. I think they're fun for anybody who's a bit of a Japanophile and wants something like really light. Like don't go in expecting serious Japanese mythology and history or anything. These are basically teen romances and I can happily and freely admit that I do kind of like this series. I read an arc of Lamp Black Wolf Grey by Paula Braxton. Um, this I won through a First Reads giveaway on Goodreads um, and I know Paula Braxton is pretty popular. She has kind of a witch series. I don't know if they're series at least but she always seems to write books with witch in the title. Uh, this is one of her previously unpublished novels. It is now being published and I had entered the giveaway because it mentioned Merlin, which I was like, oh, why not? That could be interesting. I rated this a three out of five. It's a good book. Solid literary fiction. It just really wasn't quite my thing. So I was going through it and I went, yeah, I'm not really the audience for this book. So it gets three out of five because I can acknowledge that, yes, it's an entertaining read, but not necessarily for me. 
if that makes sense. I read the very anticipated Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee. I don't have the book here with me because I lent it to my mom um, so that she could read it after I did. Um, I rated this a four, four and a half out of five. I know this book is very divisive and people are gonna argue about it until the day is done, but I quite enjoyed it. It read like a Harper Lee novel, and considering the only other thing is To Kill a Mockingbird, it had that same narrative voice that To Kill a Mockingbird did, and I thought it was a really good continuation of that story in that I watched, I got to see Scout grow up and be close to my own age, because um, <laughs> I just had my birthday like a week or so ago, and so Scout is like 25, I believe, in the novel. I'm 24, so it was interesting to read it from that perspective, and I really enjoyed it. I read The Waking Engine by David Edison. This is a book I bought off of Book Outlet. I'd remembered seeing it around in the science fiction fantasy section. I rated it a three, three and a half out of five. Um, I thought it was gonna be a little better. I did still think it was a really thought-provoking and interesting fantasy. The idea is that when you die, you wake up somewhere else. Um, I can read you part of the blurb on the back. Um, Listen to me very carefully, Sestri said. This may sound complicated, but it's not. The life you lived in the world you called home was just the first step. When you die there, you wake up someplace else, in your flesh, in your clothes, older or younger than you remember being, but you, always you. And I thought that was really interesting. It's like parallel dimensions, multiple worlds. There's, it's like, you want to call it reincarnation, but it isn't. Whatever the case, it was still kind of a thought provoking fantasy, but I don't know. It was just lacking something that could have me boost it to like a four or five star rating. I read an arc of Dream Strider by Lindsay Smith, who is the author of the Secret duology. Now I've only ever read the first book, Secret. I have yet to read Scandal, but I did quite enjoy Secret. It had this kind of X-Men in the USSR feel to it. And uh, Dream Strider caught my interest because I'll admit, the blurb reminded me a little of The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon that it talked about someone walking through someone else's dreams, but that's not an uncommon science fiction idea. So I was like, okay, interesting. And I read it. I rated this a three out of five. I liked it. It's a very, very solid YA fantasy. Uh, if it were a series, I wouldn't read others in it. I know it is a standalone. I do actually appreciate that. And I could recommend this to some people who I know, but I liked her secret, her book secret better. There was something about the characters I found more intriguing in that series. In this one, the main character was just sort of dull in comparison to the villains, and that was really distracting. I listened to Armada by Ernest Klein, as read by Will Wheaton, and thank you all the gods that Ernest Klein like demanded Will Re Wheaton read all of his novels because he's so perfect. I loved Armada. I rated it a five out of five so much fun. I am glad that this one got optioned for a movie deal and not even optioned, sold in like a seven figure movie deal. Um, which also means I'm super excited that Ready Player One is coming out. Steven Spielberg doing Ready Player One. I mean, like literally if anybody was going to do Ready Player One, Spielberg is such a good choice. It's so right up his alley. But anyway, yes, Armada, brilliant, loved it. One of my favorite books I've read so far this year. Oh my god, I'm gonna shove it at everybody I know who's never heard of it. I listened to Argo, How the CIA and Hollywood Pulled Off the Most Audacious Rescue in History by Antonio J. Mendez. I rated this a three out of five. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, I actually found the movie more entertaining. I listened to two books by Barbara Mertz. I listened to Temples, Tombs, and Hieroglyphs, A Popular History of Ancient Egypt, as well as Redland, Blackland, Daily Life in Ancient Egypt. And this came about because I was having a conversation with my personal trainer about the Spike series, I believe, uh, Tut, which I haven't watched, but she said she enjoyed and we were getting into a conversation on ancient Egypt, which I know a little bit when it comes to Egyptology, but not nearly as much as she did and not nearly as much as my mom, who's really into like mummies and stuff like that. I am much more in the ancient Greece and ancient Rome camp. I know those really well. Um, Egyptology I found really, really fascinating, but I just never really dived into it quite as deeply. But I figured why not? Hey, the audiobooks were available for my library. Why don't I read them? I rated these a three out of five, not because the information was bad, but because the writing style was really odd. I can't even explain it to you. I think she was trying to make it very conversational. Unfortunately, I found that super distracting and I really wished it hadn't been that way. I would have almost preferred a drier history book. I listened to Everneath by Brody Ashton. I rated this a one out of five star. I should have known better than to even think of reading this. Um, I almost quit. I finished it for the sake of finishing it. I will never read any other book in the series. No, this is not a case where I will ever change my mind. I hated it from, from top to bottom and start to finish. 
I read On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft by Stephen King. I rated this a 4 out of 5. I know a lot of people have to read this in high schools now. I didn't, so this was my chance to read it, and I quite enjoyed it. I read The Ode Less Traveled, Unlocking the Poet Within by Stephen Fry, who's literally one of my favorite people on this planet. I rated the book 4 out of 5. It was both wildly informative and charming as hell, because it's Stephen Fry. I finished Night's Shadow by Sebastian de Castel, the second book in his Great Coats series. This book is basically, um, or really the series, is kind of like a fantasy Three Musketeers. It has all that charm and charisma to the characters and there's just something so entertaining and just enjoyable about it, but it is dark. It's a dark fantasy and I am loving the heck out of this. I'm really glad I stumbled across the arc wherever I found it, I think on Edelweiss, and that I read it and enjoyed it so much because this is a series I'm really glad I jumped on and if you are into kind of swashbuckling fantasy, this is a really good one to check out because it is entertaining as hell. I'm also glad to say that the female characters are developing and that was my one of my biggest gripes with the first book was I thought the female characters were kind of too tropey and that there wasn't much there. They got so much better in the second book and I've really enjoyed what he's been doing with them now and I'm eagerly awaiting the third book. And finally, the last book I read in July was The Rise and Fall of Alexandria, Birthplace of the Modern Mind by Justin Pollard. I rated this book four out of five. Alexandria, that's a city I know a teeny bit more about when it comes to ancient Egypt and Egyptology, just because it was heavily influenced by the Greeks and the Romans. I mean, after all, the Ptolemaic line was pretty much established there, and it was established by Alexander the Great, even though he's Macedonian, I know. But yeah, really enjoyed this book. It was interesting. I, I can't help it. Some history books I just find interesting. All right now into August. I finally read, and I don't know why it took me so long to read, was uh, The Ice Dragon by George R. R. Martin with illustrations by Louise Royo. No, really, this book is just so pretty. I mean, that's the cover. It's beautiful. It's got illustrations throughout it. They're not in color, but they're beautiful. And this is such a short book. I don't know why it took me so long to read it. It was just so, so charming. I loved it. It's George R. R. Martin. Five out of five stars. Was there a question in here? I, I just liked it. So good. I read an arc, um, obviously this has actually been out for a while, but my copy was an arc of The Magician's Lie by Greer McAllister. I rated this a three out of five. It was kind of pitched as like the night circus meets water for elephants. I don't really like water for elephants all that much. It's okay. Like that's a three out of five book for me. I love The Night Circus. And so this book was a three, three and a half out of five. It was good like solid, kind of forgettable. You know, it's like, three out of five for me is often like, it's good, it's not memorable. I read Unhinged by A.G. Howard, which is the second book in the Splintered series, which is her very kind of, I jokingly said, gothic and horror in the sense that Hot Topic is gothic and horror, Alice in Wonderland series. Um, I gave the first book a three out of five, which is surprising for me because I don't really like Alice in Wonderland or even retellings of it all that much. It's not quite my bag. But I did give that one a 3 out of 5, so same with the sequel. I still really enjoyed it. I read Child of a Hidden Sea by A. M. Della Monica. This book I gave a 3.5 out of 5. This is a kind of weird pirate fantasy. I can't even properly explain kind of what this book is, but yes, there are pirates. Um, this was a book that I got off of Book Outlet that was also uh, magically signed. How cool was that? So that's part of why I really held on to it. Um, I really enjoyed this book, actually. I, I gave it a 3 out of 5 just because, kind of like the waking engine, it was just sort of lacking something. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something that's keeping it from being, like, great. I don't know. If it's a series, I would maybe read the sequel. I read, um, or really finished, because I'd started it but never finished it, um, Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. And I've read most of Haruki Murakami. Or, but I've also found that I read a bunch of it, but I don't really remember it. <laughs> so it's sort of why I was rereading Kafka on the shore, which, um, it's Haruki Murakami. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Like, I don't think he's ever going to get anything under a 4 out of 5 rating for me because it's Haruki Murakami. And the man is a genius. I listened to Rogues, which is edited by George R. R. Martin, um, and features a whole wide cast of readers and writers. It was awesome, especially the fact that Gwend Gwendolyn Christie plays Brienne, just aka complete badass. 
um, read one of the stories and she was phenomenal. I loved her narration. It was probably my favorite narration. So like if we have narration gold star, it goes to her. And that's including the fact that they have Roy Detrice on here and I love Roy Detrice. Um, but I rated this entire collection as a whole a four out of five because there's some stories I didn't enjoy as much. Um, so that's the only reason it's bumped down to a four out of five as opposed to a five out of five. But this was a really great collection. George R. R. Martin just really knows how to edit and compile a great fiction collection. I finished The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson, the second book in the Remnant Chronicles trilogy. The first book is The Kiss of Deception. I believe I talked about it way back in January um, and I said how much I really enjoyed it. This sequel is no exception. It really does a phenomenal job of building upon this world building. Like the world itself isn't necessarily lush but the world building is. You know what I mean? Like it just gets deeper and deeper and more interesting and the mythology of this world gets more interesting interesting. Um, so I am so happy with The Heart of Betrayal. I gave it a 5 out of 5. But that cliffhanger, she did it again. She left me on a cliffhanger. Now I have to wait for the third book, which only just got its title released and it's totally skipping my mind. I love this series. It's a wonderful YA fantasy series. Oh, I just, I just, I need the third book. I need it now. And finally, I listened to Infinity, the first book in the Chronicles of Nick series by Sherilyn Kenyon. Now, I have been told this is a part of her Dark Hunters series, which is an adult, uh, paranormal or fantasy ro yeah, paranormal romance series that she writes, that this is like a YA spin-off of it. Now, I have not read the Dark Hunters series. I didn't even know anything about the Chronicles of Nick, but it's a series and it's an audiobook format uh, at my library, all of them, and I went, <laughs> this will be a good way to catch up on the fact that I'm behind on my reading goal. <laughs> I think I am. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I am. Uh, I rated this three out of five. It was okay. It really wasn't quite my cup of tea, but I'll keep going really honestly just for the sake of keep going. That sounds horrible. As for what I'm currently reading, I am right now currently reading an Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. Now this had, and I'm going to say had because you, I haven't, I'm not even far into it and I already have gripes, um, was pitched as a YA fantasy based on ancient Rome. And I'm going to argue with the based on ancient Rome part. Um, using terms like centurion and Roman names does not a based on note warrant. Um, that basically means it's like calling the Hunger Games based on ancient Rome because what she threw in things like Pan Am like I'm sorry that bothers me. I really hope that gets better because I'm really not that far into it but this is for my book club that I'm in. This is our August book of the month and this will be our inaugural podcast. I'm sure I will have a lot to say come that podcast um, and I wonder really if I hadn't been a student of the classics, I mean a very serious student of the classics, that it like would that bother me all that much? It probably wouldn't, but right now it's bothering me a little and I'm finding it distracting. I'm hoping this book ends up getting better, especially because it was one of my most anticipated books of the year. I mean, it was blurred by Brandon Sanderson for Pete's sake. Like, I was so anticipating this book. It better not disappoint me. I'll be really distressed. The only other thing I'm really currently reading other than listening to the next Chronicles of Nick book is I am reading an arc of the Scorpion Rules. I saw this book floating around, I think from a lot of people who came out of BEA, um, and it just looked kind of interesting. I really loved the first page um, that I'm hoping it maintains that snark. Can, can, I'm just really hoping I go back to that point of view because it was funny as hell. To, guys, he said this is why you can't have nice things like sold i love this ai other than that i want to talk about what i've been watching uh because i'm tired and i want to go to bed and so until next time you guys cheers